Okay. Uh, good morning. Uh, good morning. Uh, good morning. Uh, so for our next talk today, we're very pleased to have Zach Raskin from Yale, who will tell us about the geometric lattice conjecture. Thank you very much. Um, it's great to be here. This is my third time giving a talk about this material in Cambridge, Massachusetts. So apologies to people who have seen some version of it before. Um, let me say that this uh, project is in uh, uh, it's a series of five papers, uh, which, which which are all in the some subset of these people. I'm going to put kind of a little explanation point by Dennis because it's all joint with Dennis, and then there's a complicated thing. Just, right. So it's joint with the Rinkin, Burrell, uh, Lynch, and Lin Chen. But which chain? So, <laughs> that's Kevin Lynch. Yeah. So this is there are many confusing things in the subject. Yeah. Well, I think the rest are kind of unique. Yeah, and when I, was, when I was preparing for this talk, I wanted to, you know, I was just trying to think it through. And I was thinking this is a talk about you know, groups of types A, B, C, D, E, F, and G, and it's almost A, B, C, F, G, sort of left and right. Yeah, so the, well, there's a right couple of Ds. Oh, interesting. That's another E's, yeah. Okay, so the main theorem is a proof of a conjecture of Valenton and Drinfeld. Uh, uh, additional words from uh, Gates Gray and from Rankin and Gates Gray, and it says, um, Well, I guess once and for all, if x over k is smooth projective curve, um, character to k is zero, <clears throat> uh, and it says that. Uh, and so, bungee is this stack of g bundles, it's okay, various things have occurred earlier in the week. And, I'm not going to um, recap them all. It says that this category of D modules on Bung G uh, is sort of approximately equivalent to the category of quasi coherent sheaves on uh, the stack of G check local systems on the curve, which here I mean in, in the Durham sense. So, for instance, for the general linear group, these are vector bundles of connection. Uh, so, it says that there's a kind of corrected category, um, which is called. Uh, Oh, and I want to write down just a name for this. We call it LG, this Langlands functor, but it's equivalence. Uh, there's some kind of uh, slightly bigger category that you use, which is called intco nilp of locus G check, black box it, uh, but it's some uh, uh, it's some slightly bigger category. So here you think of this as uh, just kind of an equivalent name for perfect complexes on locus G check. And these are going to be certain coherent complexes. Um, and, uh, uh, and I can make this diagram slightly bigger. Uh, I can fill it in a little bit. So this category has some kind of quotient, which I'll also black box. Um, and it's called the tempered quotient of uh, D modules on, on G. Um, and this is going to be equivalent to this quite a bit G check. Let me just say some words about the nature of, of this definition as well. So it's defined using uh, uh, like the derived Hecke algebra acting on D modules on Bun G at some fixed marked point. Uh, it's known to be independent of that marked point, and uh, and it's you know there's some there's some kind of cost here where I either I have to black box this a little bit, so it's, or I have to black box this. You can also think this is something where it, like the name Pemper is meant to be a little bit evocative. It's kind of like a best world for um, uh, things. They just all kind of work the way you expect. For instance, you get this quasi-co, but there's very interesting phenomena that happen up here in the interplay. between the two things is something important in the subject of um, between the two. But you can also think of them, the, I mean, there's one theorem here and one theorem here, and they're, they're equivalent theorems. Um, so you can't pick which one you want to work. So when you say they're equivalent theorems. Yeah. They're equivalent theorems modulo other theorems. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But it's <laughs> okay. smaller there's um uh, uh I mean, you know, everything's equivalent here. Yeah. 
<laughs> um, so th this is a, uh, uh, yeah, and there are various properties that this equivalence satisfies. So there's some kind of compatibility with Hecke functors. I'll say more about that later. Uh, various objects are supposed to match, uh, do match under this equivalence. And so it's, um, uh, in fact, it's, it's over-determined from uh, those kinds of uh, considerations. And I'll, again, we'll kind of see that in the and, and uh, uh, it, how is it compatible with abelian uh, with with uh, t structure? So oh, what a good it, question. <laughs> so, uh, so, and, interesting and yeah. um, so there's a uh, uh, some variance on this. Um, so um, there are uh, Betty and uh, restricted. Here, I have to say this sort of characteristic. Okay, I'll just say it loud. Characteristic zero. Um, uh, variants uh, also hold. Um, so, in some sense, we we just uh, deduce them formally by some kind of Riemann Hilbert considerations from the uh, Duran theorem. But these have some nicer properties. So, um, uh, so the nice thing that happens here. I guess I'll put this. A nice feature here is that when you take sheaves nil on uh, bun G, so this could be Betty sheaves or it could be this uh, restricted thing, and I take this tempered quotient, so this actually um, so it behaves formally exactly the same uh, here as here, uh, and this category picks up a T structure so that the quotient from here is exact. And uh, the nice thing is that the Langlands functor here, quasi code looks this G check, and then it could be sort of like this Betty or uh, it's restricted space that is considered in this AGK RRB work. Um, I guess there's good temper, and maybe I should put some decoration up here. But, that this is actually T exact. Um, and so those are, those are kind of some abstract. Uh, uh, words, but I guess let me just say very um, concretely what this tells you. So first of all, this business about tempered and non-tempered disappears when you consider irreducible local systems. T exact means perverse T on the left. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, and, and I think it's sort of all the details of this are written for like the restricted setting, and that's all you need for like concrete mathematics or something, but like uh, uh, at least for the things I'll say next, but the, the Betty, it's I mean, exactly the same reasoning applies. Um, uh, but, but there's some, maybe some things to fill in. Um, uh, yeah, so, uh, yeah, so a kind of miraculous thing is that if you go from like, you know, this sheaves no down to quasi co, like, well, that, that conquer is, T exact, even though this functor's not. Um, uh, and so, just sort of uh, very concretely, the concept of the structure is just going in sheaves. Uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I'm just yeah. nothing else I can't see. Um, so, very, it looks like going on the side that is sheaves nil. There's a map LG temp and LG temp there. Are they they're somehow the same map at the left? The source is different. Same. Yeah, I put I put this little decoration because it's like Durham oh. versus Betty okay. versus Betty. So I mean, this could, this you can think of as a subcategory here. If you think in terms of D modules and, and do this restricted version, and, and it's a precise statement. So let, let me just say kind of concretely what this means. Global dealing categories. So if you take some irreducible G check local system. So you can take the skyscraper sheet, um, uh, and let's just check, and I'll put irreducible here so I don't have to worry about the, the subtleties. Um, and uh, this corresponds to some object in um, D modules on, on G. So this is like the eigensheet attached to uh, the local system. And um, <laughs> Um, and uh, sort of what we know um, is uh, the following. So first, I um, sort of, okay, I, maybe there's some shifts that I ignore, but um, this F sigma 
is a uh, perverse. Um, it has a uh, singular support um, contained inside of the notebook of column, so the potential bundle of one G. Um, and uh, uh, it's semi simple. So for the perverse use form in a Billion category, so we can talk about semi simple objects. Um, and, uh, and in fact, this F sigma is going to be a direct sum of terms F sigma rho to the dimension of rho, where uh, rho is um, an irreducible representation of the centralizer of sigma. So I just think of sigma as a, 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 a representation of pi one of x into g check and take it centralizer in g check. I go over all uh, irreducible representations. Uh, for GLN, that would always be just the center because I assume that sigma is irreducible. But uh, uh, for other groups, you know, even even when that, the dual groups PGLN can be slightly bigger, and um, uh, so it's, it can be bigger by a finite group. Let me just say. Um, and here, this uh, you know the key property is going to be that this F sigma rho is actually um, irreducible. Um, the Um, so this this whole uh, uh, thing actually has a very nice, um, uh, quite um, similar to behavior of all packets in the arithmetic store. Did that answer your question? Um, uh, okay, so uh, those are kind of the main um, uh, theorems. So what I want to do, so I guess the sort of um, uh, big picture thing we do here is we uh, first construct uh, this Langlands functor. Um, second, we sort of prove some uh, structural facts about it. In other words, there's kind of a, a big theory of, of uh, you know, tools that we know how to use uh, pretty well in geometric Langlands. And, uh, and it tells us some stuff about this functor. Um, and then at the end, we conclude via tricks. Um, and let, let me say, like, in, in some sense, I have this feeling that, like, at the end of this project, I don't actually, I, I don't feel like smarter than I was at the beginning of the project. It's just like, <laughs> like, it's like, okay, the theorem's true, but like, I don't have like, it's just like there's so the, the I, I wish I, I I don't feel like I actually like fully understand yet why it's why it's true and so uh, the in the paper Dennis and I wrote it, like the last paper in the series we gave sort of a bunch of questions a bunch of ideas for how things uh, uh, could have concluded more nicely and uh, uh, would be great if someone could tell us uh, you know, I feel like there's still a lot to understand here. On the other hand, essentially every theorem in the Langlands program is proved with tricks at some point and stuff. I mean, sometimes the situation gets better over years. But, um, uh, okay, so I'm gonna, uh, uh, so that's what I'm going to sort of uh, discuss here. Yeah, and all right. And, and what is the status in the case of uh, table theorem implied uh, Lambda. Again, I mean, okay, it's, we didn't, we, we didn't write it in the tamely ramified situation, but I mean, I think that, I think that there are enough tricks that you can produce things. I mean, like, like if you sort of assume generalizations of at least foundational things, and then I think you can throw in a couple small extra tricks to do it. Um, uh, okay, so, um, other questions? Um, okay, so I want to uh, start by constructing this functor, and so there's kind of um, a couple words I have to say about this, so um, there's some sort of main players in this talk. 
one of the um, uh, the main I'm thinking. Um, yeah, I guess I wanted to say something, which is like, you know, okay. So what we're trying to do here is geometric representation theory, and uh, uh, and so what you're supposed to look for 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 doing this kind of thing is like Zergel theory. And so uh, in Zergel theory, there's kind of a like maybe a three step process. So uh, uh, the first one, you're supposed to kind of like understand the symmetries of category O, so something about like the center of the category. Uh, second, you're supposed to pick out a particular lovely object. This is the big projective object. And third, you're supposed to do a bunch of tricks involving some homological algebra tricks to just kind of, uh, you know, uh, study the things very well. And so it's, it's going to be very parallel here. So the first thing I want to talk about is kind of this analog <laughs> projective. So, um, or if you want circles functor V. So this goes from the category of T modules on uh, on G to the back, it's the functor of what's called the first or zeroth Whitaker coefficient, depending on your uh, frame of mind. <laughs> and um, uh, it's given as follows. Um, I, I'll, I mean, it's come out in different forms during the week, but um, say very quickly. So um, I take plan G, I take a version of um, plan N, but uh, where I twist by uh, row check of the dualizing sheaf. Um, this has a canonical character to, uh, to A1. And um, this is E, this is psi, and uh, this coefficient functor uh, is given by, uh, this is given by uh, pulling back to the space. Um, uh, Answering with uh, this the, the pullback of the answering with the pullback of this exponential sheaf, and then taking a homology of von N with coefficients in this object. So what you're supposed to think is that uh, instead of like kind of an automorphic sheaf, you, you could imagine taking an automorphic function, pulling it back to some uh, adelic version of N, and then just integrating it against a non-degenerate character. So this is this. Non-degenerate character. Um, this is a, a twist that occurs because of uh, serial duality that you can ignore for approximations. And uh, so, usually, bun n would be b e bundles, uh, where the induced t bundle is trivial. Instead, I say the induced t bundle is this one. Uh, then, just run serial duality, you'll see a nice character, and uh, that's what you do. And uh, and then. Uh, this is also so this this functor it, it, uh, is given as hom out of a certain object called Humphrey shriek, and that's given just by pulling back this exponential object and then shriek pushing forward. So this thing, um, and so these two are kind of the uh, so they're equivalent data because they're just um, by your data, um, but they in some sense are kind of the. Um, uh, the key players. And so what you're supposed to think kind of by, uh, uh, and I'll kind of return to this later, but like what you should think is that uh, the story is a little bit analogous to Fourier theory. And in Fourier theory, in some sense, the key point is that when you take like your abelian group A and you take the delta at zero and you decompose it into Fourier modes, each Fourier mode occurs exactly once. And we're going to see somehow the, uh, and, and once you know that, you, you know uh, Fourier theory. And so uh, we're going to see exactly that same sort of picture for this punk ray tree. So you should think of this as completely analogous to that delta at zero object. And uh, and so what, uh, and so kind of you're supposed to picture it as like perfect white. So what we want to show in some sense, we'll see later, is that it's sort of perfect white noise where uh, it's just a, you know, somehow superposition of all the possible uh, spectral parameters. Um, so that's why it plays a key role. Um, so next up, uh, I just sort of briefly want to talk about FK functors. So it's um, come up before. So uh, the nice thing is that whenever I have a point in my curve, um, there's a, an action coming from the geometric Satake theorem of representations of the Langmans dual group 
this category of D modules on on G. Um, and uh, uh, so I can also take kind of, if I take two points, I'll get an action of ref G check squared. And in fact, I can even take those two points to be the same point and I'll still get an action. And that encodes the commutativity of, of uh, uh, the geometric Sataki uh, equivalence. And so uh, there's a, a theorem of uh, a squared in Grinfeld. Uh, and it says that there exists a unique action. So this is the this theorem gets called spectral called spectral action or something. I feel like my board work is getting yeah. Um, so there exists a unique action of the category of fuzzy coherent sheaves, locus G check acting on this category of D modules on Bun G. Um, uh, extending the Hecate action. Um, um, so this is kind of one of the, the major points of the, the subject. So uh, uh, the, the um, uh, what should I say? So uh, uh, I guess, First of all, what you okay? When I say extending the souped-up Hecke action, I mean when I allow sort of many points and I allow the points to vary. Uh, that's thing one. Thing two is that uh, the proofs of this theorem it's kind of along the lines of that middle section I said, where you just say okay, we know a lot about geometric Langlands. So the first observation is that it's a yes or no question. That's the uniqueness, and then you show that it's yes just using the fact that we know oops, a lot about. Um, on G and D modules on, on Bun G and how to compute various things, um, especially using uh, representation, but using D modules coming from Katsumi localization. Uh, and I should also comment that uh, there's a uh, uh, much more beautiful proof of this in the Betty setting due to Nadler and Yun, um, the analogous statement, which really gives you a sense for um, what's going on. Um, that's sufficient. Yeah. Sorry, this the Pankashik uh, the model that you put there. In which of the model categories you have on the board that does it live? Does it only live in the sort of uh, the modules, or does it live in temporary the modules too? Or uh, okay, so so it lives in it lives in temporary D modules. So temporary, it's kind of a I wrote it as a question, but it's also a thought that it's temporary. And does it live on the Betty side? Uh, it lives in the Betty side, but it has more complicated construction. Um, so, so there's a different object that you would call like the Betty Moncure sheet. So, it's related yeah, to the fact that there was no bottom, there's things with no bottom support, right? Yeah, exactly. Uh, and also, you should, yeah, you should take some so, yeah, points. But yeah, the, the main issue is just this Moncure shriek. It doesn't at all have no open singular support. So, mm -hmm. for, <laughs> for GM, it really is that skyscraper sheet at zero, mm -hmm. just kind of like I was saying before. And, uh, and it's not at all a level system. This action, like the analysis of like acting the center of category code. Yes. Oh. Yeah. Thank you. I forgot to say that, and that is exactly right. So this is somehow it, it's not an affine situation, so it's not just the center, but it's uh, uh, it is exactly analogous in in uh, sort of servo point of view to um, uh, to the action of the center of the category. So it's not something that you get just by pure thought from the category of D modules. You really have to use the curve and things. But okay. Um, yeah, and then I'm going to do somehow just like what um, uh, people said, and I'm going to do it, I think, just for my own uh, purposes and kind of a, I'll do it sort of all at once. <laughs> so, the uh, construction of the functor goes as follows. Um, so, okay, there's, um, there's A, which is in some sense tautological, to say it. So, there's going to exist a unique functor, which is um, sort of LG10. I forget if I wrote it on top or on bottom, but um, from C modules on the bind G or its temporary quotients to uh, Quasi-colloquial this G check. 
um, such that, um, well, so, such that I have some kind of commutative diagram, but well, this is going to be the global sections functor. Um, this is going to be my functor of basic Whitaker coefficient. I map down to vect, and uh, uh, of course, this functor should be linear with respect to the action of what's it called, So it should be a map of module categories. Like tautological from the flat theorem. Yeah, yeah, tautological from, from what I said before. So there's no additional content in this part, but in B, C, and D, at least there's a little bit more D. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, so then there's kind of a part B, which is that this LG temp um, with respect to Pasha's question, LG temp has a finite homological amplitude. Uh, C is that so this is somehow a little bit independent, but um, uh, compacts. So what are called compact objects? So the analog of perfect complexes or coherent complexes. So they're small objects in bungee. Um, are bounded below. So, uh, in, in the, like, they're cohomologically bounded below. It's, it's not completely a tautology because Bungie is not quasi-compact, but it's not. So you have to do a little bit of extra work, but it's not horrible. And then the kind of key fact is going to be that there exists, again, a unique uh, functor, um, uh, LG, um, fitting into and, and this again, it's a tautology from B and C, uh, fitting into the commutative diagram with LG temp I wrote before. Um, so that, uh, uh, you know, basically when I apply LG to a compact object, this is going to be bounded below. So what does it mean, souped up KK action? Uh, it means there's a version of this, uh, so there's a version of this ref check that lives, that, okay. So first, if you gave me an I, a point in X to the I, I would want to say that ref check tensor I many times acts on this category. And in fact, when the when the two points are the same, it's going to factor. So there's a version of this category ref check that lives over X to the I for every I. Um, and where it sort of looks like rep G check, tensor rep G check away from the diagonals and rep G check at the diagonal, uh, if, if it's worker two. So the, there's an action of this rep G check X to the I for every I. And the assertion is that, um, uh, uh, that there's a unique action so that, uh, well, and I guess that, that also has a monoidal functor to this quasi colosis G check. And, uh, and the assertion is that there's a uh, unique action that's compatible with all of these X to the I actions. So that's the precise meaning. Oh. Uh, so there's some version of this Hecate symmetry when you don't have to just have one point, but you have two points, or maybe the two points are allowed to be like sort of ring valued points and, and, and that's the assertion. And also this point that quite coefficients, is it faithful uh, in some sense? Um, uh, uh, so, uh, let me return to it in a moment. So it's definitely okay. Uh, so it's not faithful because, uh, for instance, uh, I don't know. Okay, for GM, it's take the fiber at, at the trivial bundle. Ah, okay. But but so that that you can replace by the smarter object that involves like remembers translations also uh -huh. on like GM. So in that case, it becomes faithful, uh -huh. but. But uh, uh, what this functor encodes is somehow all the possible literature coefficients of a D module if you can unwind the formalism and, uh, and apply a Castleman Schleicher formula. And so, uh, for instance, it kills a constant sheet for GL2, so this functor here, which is related to the fact that this is supposed to be a quotient functor at the end of the day. So. <laughs> uh, other questions? So just the short, short story is uh, we have this sort of very uh, uh, simple-minded functor, and then using, uh, again, the sort of homological algebra tricks, whatever they are, it's just some like playing with key structures, you actually build the full Langlands functor. 
And let me say, this is actually one of the kind of happy, it's a it's the start of the story, but it's a happy feature. So uh, 10 years ago, Dennis wrote, more than 10 years ago, Dennis wrote a thing called Outline of the Proof of Geometric Langlands for GL2 or something like this. And there, there was a very complicated construction that was suggested. So it didn't just involve these non-degenerate Whitaker coefficients, which are great, but it involved degenerate Whitaker coefficients also. The idea was that like, if you have a modular form, you want to Q expand it and you shouldn't forget the zero, th like the, the Whitaker coefficients are about A1, A2, A3, A4, and you shouldn't forget A0. Uh, but in fact, the, the, the somehow the stupid thing is you, for categories, you can forget uh, A0, you just sort of recover it by doing some homological algebra games. Uh, a little bit, a little bit uh, um, uh, miraculous. So, um, yeah. So, um, uh, so now let me kind of give some this main player two in my mind. So um, it's a sheet called AD. Um, and by definition, it's what you get by applying this Langlands functor to this um, gray object. Um, and it's some quasi coherent sheaf on uh, this G check. Um, so of the automorphic multiplicity chain. So let me just um, make some. So, so uh, just out loud, I'll say this again, but uh, this encodes all the, what you should imagine as encoding all the, the somehow the modes or whatever of this, all the, all the spectral decomposition of this Poincaré streak. Um, so this AG is an algebra. Um, uh, what we want to show, if we believe in this Langlands, Program is that the uh, the unit map from this structure sheaf of loop cis to uh, this AG um, is an isomorphism. Um, uh, let me just um, uh, uh, so let me just say out loud a couple things that this sheaf encodes. So one is that. Uh, so why do I call it automorphic multiplicity sheaf? So if you take its fiber, uh, let me just say an irreducible local system, that's some algebra, just like an algebra in Vect. You take modules over this algebra and that's gonna be the category of Hecke eigensheaves for that local system. So in other words, you can this, this algebra it just encodes the category of Hecke eigensheaves. So it encodes the multiplicities. It, it knows like, were there any Hecke eigensheaves? Were there multiple Hecke eigensheaves? So, so it, it's just, you can, it's sort of just mm -hmm. kind, of, kind of measure in Montreal. Uh, but the end is O. But what? But the end is so. But at the end it's O. Yeah. Yep. At the end it's O. That's that's the theorem. Okay. But but so but so this encodes everything we're kind of trying to look at here. Um, uh, and um, yeah, and again, this temporary geometric blank lens, it's directly equivalent to the statement that this is an isomorphism. Oh, not quite directly, so I'll say this in a second. But uh, besides besides that, so it's equivalent to the statement that this is an isomorphism. And um, uh, yeah, so I, I guess um, uh, maybe there's sort of a, a um, I guess I will, will say something about this. So there's a theorem of um, 2022 of, um, uh, um, it says that this functor LG10 um, is conservative. So that was um, the question. So this means that uh, if you have an object of this tempered quotient and you apply this functor to it and you get zero, then your object was zero. And uh, it's uh, uh, different from what happens in arithmetic. The proof, I think, is, is very interesting. But I... Uh, like that one, I did feel like I understood something more at the end, but uh, uh, it's a different but, but this does not apply to morphisms. Morphisms. Right, it doesn't apply to morphisms, for instance. Yeah. So it can feel morphisms. Well, that's, yeah, that's just the nature of Well, okay, I guess not a posteriori, just because at the end of the day, we just proved it's an equivalence. Ah, ah. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, but we, from what we showed, yeah, you don't, you don't know that. Okay. Um, 
Uh, yeah. Um, so, uh, so basically, you showing that you is this unit map is an isomorphism. It's the same as uh, uh, the three dimensional one in same capture. So it can be this tempered version a priori, but I encourage everyone not to worry so much. Um, uh, so. Uh, okay, so that's kind of uh, the setup a little bit. Um, is that supposed to be, can you say more, is that an easy implication from what you said before? So you know, work to equivalent to do. Yeah, so so it's equivalent in the, it's a, so it's, <laughs> What's very obvious is that it's equivalent to GLC temp, like the sort of bottom arrow that I wrote before, just because what what this is like, so I have like a right adjoint, which is conservative, and then I have a left adjoint. I'm saying if you run the left adjoint and then run back, it will be tensor by this AG. And so if that's the identity, then, then, uh, the, then the left adjoint was fully faithful and the right adjoint is conservative, and so you win. Just kind of um, um, okay, so um, so this U is some adjunction model. If you wanted to, I mean, I don't know, it's the unit map for an algebra, but also it's the adjunction model. So what are you explaining? Yes. Well, it's okay, it's an algebra because it's left to join, right to join. But like it's formal that this L functor has like this right adjoint, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. And the right adjoint is given by no. Wait, that uh, yeah, that has the, so the the <clears throat> it's formal that it has a left adjoint. So Sorry, yeah. The left adjoint is acting on this functor A shape. Um, uh, yeah. Um, so yeah, that that is. Um, okay, so uh, now I sort of want to talk a little bit about um, these sort of structural features of um, uh, geometric line lens and uh, sheath HG. Um, so, basic input all the time is something I don't see through on, so it's a lot of which is uh, uh, something that was kind of folklore in the subject for a while, but now we have a long paper doing it, but the long paper is not quite online yet. But um, uh, So there's something called the kajan lustig category for G at critical level. So uh, if you haven't seen it before, not, this talk won't, I'm not going to fix that for you. So there's some you can move algebra, you consider modules that are uh, integrable, start to Maximal X subgroup, and, uh, uh, and then I consider these specifically at the critical level. There's a theorem that this is equivalent to uh, INCO on uh, space of monodromy free offers for G check. So both of these things are local around um, points inside the curve. Uh, monodromy free offers occurred in Asha's talk. So that's business. So then there's some vocalization functor due to a uh, balance and interest bells that maps you into D modules on bun G. And uh, here there's sort of a full uh, push uh, functor, which goes to uh goes to G check. Here's my LG temp. And uh, the nice, nice uh, construction all the time. So this is done. This gets called the FLE. In the so what are the form of these, yeah? Yep. Um, and punch, uh, punch, yeah? Uh, uh, punch, uh, okay, I have a local yeah. system on the disk, and on the yeah. punctured disk, I have an upper structure. Yeah, yeah. So, and, and my, my full push, it involves, I have a local system on the curve and an upper structure away from the point. So that's a correspondence okay. between this mm -hmm. and this. Mm -hmm. um, and the assertion is that is that this, uh, that this diagram is and um, uh, so this is sort of one of the nice things that we have all the time in um, Durham geometric language in particular is 
this map is not surjective, but it's not so far from being surjective. And so we can study lots of objects here by cat's money localizing and then computing things. And, and we can compute what the Langlands functor does to these cat's money localized objects in some explicit terms. And so uh, we just, we know what these things map to and we can use that to do various calculations. The um, things on the top are not carrot category, category level. Uh, they're not what? Carrot categories. They are car carrot categories and it's an equivalence of carrot category. Even if critical level. Yeah. Yes, yes, yeah. Um, so then we have... Yeah, for me, it's like the, it's, I would say, factorization category. So there's no Shugawara or anything. It's just like. Right, right, right. Points, so yeah. that's the name used for something that doesn't have a parallel password. Just... Yeah, that doesn't bother me. Yeah, that's just. Um, uh, yeah. So, right. um, so, so this localization is like a conformal block functor, basically. Yes, both of, both of them are like conformal block functors. Yeah. Um, uh, and, and that's also how the proof goes. The diagram to me is. So, so here there's something you should think of local nature, and then uh, local nature and the players involved look like vertex algebras. Here there are some functors. Well, at the bottom, it just is of global nature, and there are these functors of kind of globalizing. And both of them can be interpreted in the language of vertex algebras. And uh, and then there's this sort of global functor also. But, um, you know. Well, I guess but the nice thing is, by its nature, everything here is symmetric with respect to Hecke. So you can replace this category with vect in the first step. And, uh, and then you change some. And it's from general vertex algebra considerations. Right. Yeah. So you finished by the Yeah, just keep saying. The bottom doesn't, like it's Q code. You have access to Q code, not in code, something global. I mean, I, I just. Yeah, that's correct. And every, everything I have here is going to be tempered that gets, gets my localization. So that, that's why it's not surjective. But. Uh, uh, but just to give you a sense, every D module, for instance, is a limit of objects coming from cat's body localization. Right? There's a weird parallel thing that we obtained at the end of the day, which is like every end object of end code note is a limit like pretty kind of explicitly of, of things in quasi code. I yeah, just asking the, the, your choice to not put tempered on the left is just aesthetic. Uh, yeah, it's aesthetic. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. <laughs> um, uh, it, it, it would, the content would not change if I wrote it. Uh, yeah. So, um, uh, so using this input, we deduce a couple things. So the first is um, uh, sort of what's called the co the compatibility of um, uh, the geometric Langlands functor with uh, constant terms. So. So there's a functor taking out a D module on, on G and producing one for any levy. Here I uh, uh, have a levy quotient of parabolic P. And um, here I have this functor LG. I have this functor code no, X is G chat. Um, here I have this functor for LM. And by induction, unless G. Um, I can assume actually that this functor was an equivalence, which is great. Um, uh, so this will be this info nope of closest M check. Yeah, and I guess it's at the dual counter part. Um, and uh, here there's some sort of we call it con constant term spectral. So the assertion is that this diagram uh, actually commutes. So if you apply the Langlands functor and then do something spectral, it's the same as. Uh, apply the constant, uh, take the constant terms of your automorphic D module and then apply the Langlands functor there. And so uh, uh, you, you can think of this as kind of a geometric version of calculating constant terms of Eisenstein series, um, uh, which is a, uh, you know, known thing in automorphic world, but has some content. And running that content is actually kind of, uh, uh, I think my understanding is that. Uh, uh, Chen and Lin are, and, and uh, yeah, maybe also Veraldo are working on a geometric version of, of uh, what we did of proving this theorem, um, kind of by imitating in some souped up way what happens uh, in classical theory. 
But we did this in a, uh, a stupid way, except it was a stupid way that took a lot of hard work, the foundational thing, which is basically to say the following. So what's, what's hard is you kind of want to compute everything in sight uh, on, on Eisen, like, okay, what this really encodes is constant terms of Eisenstein series. And that's just, it's a little bit involved. And uh, uh, what we say to do instead is to just first cons consider everything in sight it, on these Katz Moody localized D modules. So these constant terms actually can be expressed in terms of some chiral homology and some BRST. It's a, a version of this diagram actually. And, uh, and also we know what the Langlands functor does to Katz Moody localized things. So in some sense we know what happens here and what happens here with Katz Moody localized things. And, uh, uh, and then we are able to deduce this commutative diagram. There's a, you know, there's a problem of building out from Katz Moody localized things, which is maybe why it wasn't done earlier, but uh, uh, that's uh, during the street at setting. Is there a different group? No. Oh, I mean, probably, probably what the what these other guys are doing. I can do under the analytic setting. I, I think that okay. There's two options. One is I think you can just deduce it from characteristic zero. Sometimes this is okay. unsatisfying. You probably can. Yes. Yeah, and uh, and then I, I but I think that the methods that they're using should adapt to the analytic setting. They're doing an actual geometric argument. Okay. Um, uh, the, the observation is that there's kind of a cheap hack that, that lets you do this without really that's the right So the, 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 the interaction talk about is the one sort of inverse of Bakimoto or Alpha Bakimoto. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, yeah. I, I mean, in the case when this is the torus, that's exactly yeah. It's, so it's sort of BR, So what's over here is kind of BRST with the character, and then what's happening here is kind of BRST yeah. without the character. Um, and so the, kind of the screening operators die and you pick up something that has PG nature and it's a little bit more involved. Um, so uh, uh, for us, this implies that this AG um, uh, restricted to, well, to the, the set of reducible local systems uh, is isomorphic to O. Uh -huh. um, so, and what this is saying is that our map, our like unit map is an isomorphism over the space of reducible local systems. So this, this setup exactly lets you probe um, the reducible guys. Um, so that's structural thing one. Questions? Are there questions in the corner? <laughs> <laughs> Um, uh, okay, so the second structural thing um, uh, is the following. So the, okay, so now, now let me just say, we understand this AG, we understand multiplicities over reducible local systems. And so now what's left is to understand multiplicities at irreducible local systems, which of course is the most interesting part and it's kind of, a little bit remarkable. We'll sort of build off the information at reducible things to actually deduce what happens at irreducible things. So, uh, uh, so the theorem is that if you fix um, uh, an irreducible local system, uh, then there exists a perfect pairing. What, what does it mean irreducible? It means that for every uh, representation, it's irreducible. No, it means that that whenever that you can't restrict it, you can't reduce it to a pair of all Ah, besides so object. Yeah. So so it can still reduce to a, another semi simple subgroup. Yes, it's allowed. Yeah, that, that actually isn't possible. Yes, I mean uh, it is I, possible. Yeah, yeah, I, I, say something wrong? I mean, it, well, it can restrict to principle SL two, for example. Uh, Yes, okay, yeah, true, okay, fine, yeah. Right. But, but this is irreducible, according to- This is irreducible, yeah, that's, uh, that's absolutely great. Sort of, as, as it should be, yeah, sorry. Mm -hmm. um, uh, uh, okay, so the assertion is that there uh, exists a perfect pairing, so it's gonna go between this AG sigma. Um, so again, let me remind this is some uh, algebra. And then over here, I'm going to take the homology. It's really co-chains. 
or chains on um, uh, on a certain kind of global space. <clears throat> um, and it's again these monodromy meet free oppers which come up because of this. So yeah, maybe I should have said in the beginning. Okay, whatever. Okay, this kind of Lustig theory and, and all these things, they're, they're just, um, they might be unfamiliar. They're a little bit, not specialists in the subject, but not, um, I don't know that it's always percolated. Um, uh, so what happens is you, let me just say this in words. So you can talk about a monodromy free offer structure on sigma. Um, I don't mark the points. So this is some kind of huge beast of a space, but it's not, it's okay. And, uh, and basically what happens is if you try to calculate this object using uh, Katsumudi localization, which is how um, uh, if basically you're, you're able to do, I'm going to say, mm -hmm. without, without any tricks or anything, what you find is that it's sort of basically the cohomology of this space. So it monogram free just means generic offer structure. Generic offer structure, yeah. So it's, yeah, exactly. So, so I have, I, I look at all offer structures at the generic point in my curve. Um, uh, which happens to form a moduli space, and it's a moduli space that's a little bit um, uh, exotic. Um, and let me just kind of comment that this is an algebra, and this is a co-algebra, as homology of a space always is. And uh, uh, and so uh, uh, this is a pairing as such. So it's the way the stuff works. Um, so if you just dualize everything, which we'll do in a second, like this algebra is the dual to this co-algebra. This co-algebra is the dual to the, or the, the dual over here is this co-algebra. Um, the content of the or is the uh, I, I Yes, yeah, that's a great answer. I mean, but, so th this is a, okay, maybe there's a couple kinds of content here. So, uh, so, which one thing, one thing is I like it. So um, if instead that there's, okay, there's another version of this statement where instead of homology, I took like uh, global sections of the dualizing sheaf. Yeah. So something coherent, which is what you would expect because this guy's coherent. And if you wrote that, it would be literally what you get by just kind of tracing through this stuff. So you can write this uh, Poincaré sheaf like kind of away from reducible local systems as some explicit localization of, of some uh, uh, chiral algebra in this kachan lustig category. And uh, when you just compute the diagram, that's the answer you get. Then there's a second theorem, which is that global sections of the dualizing sheaf is the same as topological homology. And that's just somehow related to the fact that these spaces of rational maps are just a little weird. So, first, just part A of what you just said would give you the pairing. And then you have to show it in the sentence. That, that, that. Uh, like well, if you had the dualizing sheet there, it would be some obvious pairing, and then you would be showing it in the sentence. So, so what I'm doing is I'm showing this co-algebra has an ex expression as that as that coherent thing. Right. And yeah. So that that's that in some sense is the main content. Oh, I see. And, and the idea is like you have all these contractibility of rational maps theorems due to Dennis and people. And uh, starting, starting, actually starting with Balance and Grinfeld, and built up a lot by Dennis. And uh, the idea is that those tangent spaces also look like spaces of rational maps. So they're also contractible. And so there's no difference between O and O. Um, so you could, yeah, I'm sorry, I'm just, so you could have formulated the pre theorem, <clears> yeah. is what you just said, and then this would have been a core, but. Yes. So it's like two theorems, right? Yeah. 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 You allow arbitrary pools for workers, yes? Uh, uh, yes. Yeah. I mean, it, it's it's what I said. It's an upper structure at the generic point. Mm -hmm. um, but to make that a moduli space, I'm just saying, don't don't be surprised if it gets confusing if you try to work it out. Yes. Um, and so, uh, yeah, and one nice thing here is that because my local system. So when you think what an opera is, you have a reduction to the Borel, and uh, there's kind of a closed condition, which is which is supposed to hold. Uh, and uh, so that's the Griffith's transversality. And then there's an open condition, which is non-degeneracy. But the latter is redundant for irreducible local systems. So this actually, uh, everything here somehow behaves like 
like homology of something. Um, Sorry, what is redundant? Uh, the the non degeneracy in the outer structure. So that that's just follows from the um, exactly the definition I said of the irreducible local system. Um, and so you actually kind of can can say that uh, this thing is going to be self dual as a vector space um, because of that properness. And so what we obtain is that when I look at this um, uh, this irreducible guy. I get a couple of facts. So first it's self-dual over the irreducible locus. Um, I also get that it's uh, connective. So it's in degrees, uh, in logical degrees, um, less than or equal to zero. Uh, 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 it's commutative. That's because homology is co-commutative. Um, uh, its fibers are reduced. And so at the end of the day, I can take sort of relative spec, relative spec of this thing. And this is some finite H tall buffer of um, Moxis G check irreducible. So it's a tall because the fibers are, are all reduced. Uh, it's finite because of this self-duality. Um, yeah. yeah. You know, I mean, this multiple structure on A was defined by some, because you know, we think that it's like you know, different factors, something like that. And, and, and on this homology, you have a square algebra structure for different reasons. So how do you know that this pairing sort of respects the, that algebra structure? How do you know that that algebra actually goes to that quality structure? I swear it's just commutative diagrams with the stuff. I mean, it's really kind of built into, the, like, I didn't really say how to construct this isomorphism. I didn't spell it, spell it enough words, but like, you construct the isomorphism and then you just like. Isomorphism between one and one. Well, you construct this perfect the, the, pairing. The bearing, the bearing. Yeah. I mean, this, again, this thing's kind of naturally self dual, so you can also think of it as an isomorphism, but. I prefer to think pairing so that I have algebra versus co-algebra. And it, kind of like in that form, there's, I, I don't know. But, okay, I remember some general lemma about, that, you know, like monads and co-monads and when you have a pairing between them. And it's just like, the, so constructing a pairing between a monad and a co-monad, it's some very kind of explicit thing about commutative diagrams of functors and the relevant diagrams. So. Yeah, it's kind of like the the picture I had before. It had some adjoint functors and things. Sort of look at those. So I'm just saying, there's not a lot of content in that. the The main content is actually this Durham versus uh, coherent thing. Yeah. Just sorry. Is maybe you said this, but it's over monodromal three sigma. Is that you already knew this was kind of non empty? Uh, uh, it doesn't matter. So, so, so we do know it's non-empty. That's a theorem of Rubinkin, but actually, I don't care at the moment. So at this point in our listening to you, you don't know that like a g sigma, a g sigma could be zero. I mean, yeah, could be zero. Could be zero still. Still, still could be zero for our purposes. Yeah, it has not been used and, and will never be used in the in the argument. Um, like you guys here. Okay, so now we get to the tricks. Portion of the story, which I'm, I can't tell if I'm 15 seconds past or 45 seconds left, but um, uh, I'll, just, I'll just take a few minutes just to say something to give. So um, to simplify, I'm going to make the following assumptions. So my genus is at least two. My G is uh, simply connected, and um, and I don't have uh, G equals BGL two. And the genus is equal to two. There are various cases that we deal with separately, and fortunately, this is type A. So, um, uh, uh, yeah. So we're able to deal with type A directly. Um, uh, uh, okay. So let me just say what we need to rule out is like that this object is too big or that this AG is too big or too small or, you know, to get to David's question, but where do you want to say SA2? Uh, oops, I would think in the dual group. Okay. Um, 
Uh, yeah, so, so I have this kind of multiplicity problem that I'm trying to do. So here's my kind of main input. Um, so something uh, very nice. So I said this AG, what it encodes is mapped from the Poincaré sheaf to like some Hecke functor applied to the Poincaré sheaf. And in general, that's something very complicated to compute. That's the main content of the theory uh, 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 at a technical level. But there's one case where it's easy, which is when that Hecke functor is the identity. And so uh, you can see that the global sections of this AG, it's equal by, by essentially just unwinding the definitions to endomorphisms to this um, Poincaré sheaf. Um, oh, wait, actually, I, I um, sorry. No, I had it backwards. I want no, okay, G to be yeah, adjoint. Yeah. Um, so then I rule out this case. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, so then uh, when I form the endomorphisms of this Poincaré sheaf, it turns out this is just scalars. For kind of very simple geometric reasons, this bun n is just locally closed. Bun n mod, mod uh, the torus is locally closed inside of bun G. So that lets you just compute the endomorphisms directly. Um, so if I stuck, if I did hom from Poincaré to a Hecke functor applied to Poincaré, it's hard to compute, but in this case, it's something very small. This mirrors at the end of the, this is Langland's dual to the statement that there are no non-constant functions on Moxis G check. And uh, that's something extremely Durham that we're using. So that's like the key, key thing where like nothing we do could possibly ever have an analog in the Betty world, but also we don't need it. Okay, so, um, <clears throat> Uh, so what we want to do is build off of this. So this says that AG couldn't have been O plus O, for instance. That's the idea. We know that already from Eisenstein series, but this, this is telling us something about this object being small. So to build off of this, uh, we do the following. So first, um, we show that these irreducible local systems are actually simply connected. Um, so that implies that my AG irreducible, it's just a direct, it's a copy of the structure sheet and this looks as irreducible direct some, some number of times. Connected and simply connected. Um, and our, value, our goal is to show that N is equal to one. Um, and this uh, statement that it's uh, simply connected, I'd be very glad if someone told me this was a classical theorem and Topology or something. Uh, we didn't see it, but we, uh, so anyway. But, but some, I mean, it's some very uh, classical kind of uh, algebraic geometry. So all of this is yeah. uh, just nice things about Loxis and Bungie and things at this point. So, um, uh, so that's uh, the first thing. So then we also show that it's uh, the following statement. So, uh, that when you take global sections of this AG and you take its H zero, um, this is the same. So we know what this we know what this complex is, right? Like this, but this is the same as H zero of. Um, so, and I don't have to write H zero here, but now I do. As a, uh, I guess, what happens when you do this uh, over the irreducible locus? Here, the idea is that we have the following um, kind of general picture. So we have this AG that maps to. Um, uh, AG irreducible, such as kind of J lower star. Here there's some kind of local cohomology that comes up. But this we know the same as local cohomology of O, because this is local cohomology along the reducible locus. Uh, and so this is, you know, sort of our use of the theory of Eisenstein series. And this object is uh, going to be in degrees greater than or equal to two um, uh, under my assumptions. Um, <laughs> And so then we end up with the following. So K, global sections of this AG, that's this theorem here. That's the same as H0 and global sections of this AG irreducible. This is the same as H0 of global sections by what I was just saying over there, and uh, O on most of this irreducible uh, derived some n times. And uh, this has uh, mentioned greater than or equal to n, uh, and so therefore n had to be one. And I mean, if n was zero, then I couldn't have gotten k, so that's answering David's question. Uh, so, uh, and five is equal to one. Right, and we think here that this AG reducible is a sheep and not a complex, so this is something you know for the complexity large. Yeah, 
Uh, that's part, I said it's I said it's functions on a finite tall cover. Okay. That was that was that was the content of this stuff. You know, this, what we call ambidext energy theory. This yeah. perfect pairing. Yeah. That's, that's what we're able to get. So so we kind of know what that theory gives you at a geometric level is like if you think about the category of eigensheaves, there's going to be sort of finitely many objects in each year usable local system, and you can think about kind of the isomorphism classes, and we'll form a finite tall cover over over locus. So those are the tricks. Oh, yeah. Sorry for going over.